the heat index is 115 again today. So I've been doing my normal two hour checks on all the animals and the bunnies are hot, but they are not too hot, thankfully. What are you doing with your tongue? have been on the channel a while re may remember s'mores here. S'mores is a three-year-old La Mancha Doe that I have tried to breed and I've just been unsuccessful every single season. She comes into her normal heat, she lets the buck mount her and everything appears to go well. She even ceases to go back into a heat but then nothing happens. Like her due date comes and goes, she doesn't kid, she doesn't come into milk. It's been really kind of a struggle. So this past March, S'mores actually started bleeding from her back end. And it just so happened that when she started bleeding, I did have a vet appointment scheduled for her and I did take her to the vet and I did have blood work drawn and the blood work showed that really nothing was wrong. She didn't have any of the common caprine diseases and she wasn't deficient in any minerals, which is one of the things that I suspected that maybe she was mineral deficient and wasn't able to retain a pregnancy. But that proved to not be the case. So the vet and I, we have our hands up a little bit and what to do with her. I had considered putting in what's called a cedar inside of s'mores to induce her into a heat out of season and see if we can get her to breed by basically artificially inducing her heat. I haven't decided to go that route quite yet. I'd really like to be able to use her with Hamish, our brand new La Mancha buck. And right now Hamish, he's really tiny. I'm not sure that he would even know what to do if he could even reach at this point. So I plan on holding her over until fall time when she'll go into her natural heat cycles. And I've got a little bit more hope this year than I've had in years past because I may be starting to figure out what's wrong with her, or at least it's an option, and I wanna go over that. So she's gonna get pretty antsy with me because it hurts, but s'mores recently hurt her foot. I know it's gonna be decently impossible to see what's going on, so, but basically, hold on. <laughs> so goats have a cloven hoof or a split hoof, and something happened where s'mores got something stuck in between her toes and it actually went through one of her hoof horns here and came out the other side. I never saw what the item was, but I could see the aftermath and she was favoring this foot quite badly. I don't love to give antibiotics just because, so I did wait her out for a day or so, but she wasn't doing better. I sprayed iodine on her foot, I wrapped it, and she just really stopped moving, and it wasn't looking good. So I decided I was gonna treat her with an antibiotic, but before I just went in and gave her penicillin, I wanted to make sure that penicillin was or wasn't the best fit for this type of injury. So I am aware that certain types of antibiotics are best suited for certain types of infections or certain areas of the body that get infected. And in doing a little bit of research, I came across that LA-200 oxytetracycline is actually really great for any kind of infection that affects the foot. One of my favorite resources for this type of information is the Texas Meat Goat website. I'm gonna place it in the description down below so you can bookmark that and reference it as needed. Very valuable information, I love it. But while I was reading about that specific antibiotic, I read that it actually can be really the only course of action for certain abortion diseases that goats can get. So it brought me down a little bit of a rabbit hole because I was like, huh. So this goat, I haven't been able to breed her successfully. She did bleed right at her last vet appointment. And at that appointment, Dr. Flannery said that she thought that s'mores was actually miscarrying. It had been a long time since she was with the buck and I never saw any baby come out, but she did in fact bleed. So I figured it's not impossible that s'mores may have one of these abortion diseases, chlamydia being one of them. Hopefully, We'll be able to kill two birds with one stone, take care of her foot, which was really the issue that I was trying to treat initially. But maybe this is exactly what she needs in order to carry a baby. 
And I wanted to come on here and share the information with you. If you've got everything else going right for a doe, but she still doesn't seem to be able to successfully carry a kid, she might need a course of antibiotics. And I think in most cases, it can't hurt to try that. So here we are. S'mores is a pure white goat, save so a couple black spots on her back end. So you can kind of tell where I've been placing the antibiotic. The dosage for oxytetracycline is five mLs per 100 pounds. So she has seven and a half mLs in here and it's supposed to be given subcutaneously, which is under the skin. This is a lot of medicine and injecting that into her muscle could hurt quite badly. I don't wanna hurt her, but I also don't really wanna be giving the medicine in the same exact spot for five days straight. I've done one dose behind each shoulder, one here and one on the other side. It is probably pretty tender. She's definitely not happy with me right now. With subcutaneous injections, you want to avoid the back end of the goat. So I'm going to try to place her next dose either on the other side of her rib cage or probably so you can see it better. I'm gonna try it on her neck. This medication is pretty thick and so you should use an 18 gauge needle. And you're just gonna pull the skin out, make basically a tent or a pocket for the medicine to go into. She's going to be mad and then place the medication. Oop. Okay, okay. Hold it. Relax. So that went well. <laughs> probably not edit that out because that's just real life. She moved, I got in her muscle, it hurt, but I ended up putting the rest of the medicine over her rib cage and she did get the dose for today. Yeah, are you mad? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The thing that holds my head catch closed recently just broke and I thought that wrapping around the lead rope would work, but not for her. S'mores comes from some really good genetics and I don't exactly want to throw her to the side. I would love to use her. Most importantly, I would really love to milk her. This is what we do. Good girl. <laughs> so Elpis has a new hot spot on the back of her head. Originally, the first spot showed up right here on her shoulder. It spread kind of around her neck, but we were able to rein it in with this product called New Stock. I've been putting this on the spot on the back of her head and it doesn't seem to necessarily be working. I put that New Stock ointment on her head this morning and she's rubbed it completely off. So hopefully the hot spot spray will stay on for a little while. I've been spraying her once a day, sometimes twice. And this is really only the second day that I've done that hot spot treatment. We do have quite a lot of flies this time of year. So keeping the flies out of it has been super important to me. She hasn't gotten any kind of infection from these wounds that she's had. I know, I know. Good girl, good girl. There's a possibility that what she's dealing with is ringworm. My friend Rachel brought that to my attention and said that we could use topical ringworm treatment for humans. I'm gonna try out livestock hotspot spray first and then we'll see what happens. But she may also just need a trip to the vet and see what's going on. Hey sweetie, hello. Come here, back up. That's getting better, huh? In reading about certain abortion diseases like chlamydia in dairy goats, I was reading that oftentimes they need to be treated once a month during their pregnancy because whereas they can get over the chlamydia themselves or with a course of antibiotics, it's kind of something that pretty much lives long term in their body and could crop up again later. And the last thing you would want is for it to crop up at the end of pregnancy and cause them to lose their kids. 
So I think I am going to take that course of action with s'mores. She's gonna go through this course of antibiotics right now, and then right before we breed her, we'll put her through another course, and then I will treat her, not with a five-day course each month, but once a month, I'm going to be giving her oxytetracycline to keep that chlamydia suppressed and at bay, and hopefully we can have success with that line. Don't be mean.